Good morning, everyone. Andrew Douglas here in the Action News 5 Digital Desk. There is new hope for lung cancer patients. Uh, a game-changing breakthrough for lung cancer uh, occurred at the World Conference of Lung Cancer. It's by far, as you might know, the leading cause of cancer death among all Americans. So think about it here. It's more than breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer combined. Um, that's that's very daunting and while the stats are a reminder of the severity of the disease advances in lung cancer treatments are helping change the outcome of providing much needed hope for all diagnosed patients. I want to get to uh, our interview here. Uh, we have Montessa Lee, a never smoker who was 28 when she was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer and then uh, Dr. Dwight Owen, uh, an oncologist with The Ohio State University. Good morning to you both. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Appreciate you being here. Um, Dr. Owen, let's begin with you. Um, you just returned from this World Cancer Lung Conference. Tell us about this um, exciting uh, research that came out of small cell cancer. Small uh, cell cancer. That's lung cancer, right? Explain that. Yeah, it's a small cell lung cancer. It's a really exciting time for, for patients with small cell lung cancer. In just the last few years, we've had more treatments approved than we've had approved in the last few decades. And it's all a result of the research that's being done and the clinical trials that have been done in the last few years to offer our patients new hope with new treatments. The newest breakthrough has been in immune therapy. This is different than chemotherapy. It works by allowing your immune system to target and destroy cancer cells. And we're fine tuning what type of small cell lung cancer and what target would offer the best hope and the best treatments for our patients. You know, we hear a lot about non-small cell lung cancer. Um, how is small cell lung cancer different? What is it? And, um, and, and tell, me, tell me again um, how effective this new research is. Yeah, that's a great question. So the names come from how this, the cancers look under the microscope, but small cell lung cancer is a very different cancer. It's less common and it's more aggressive and it's very challenging to treat. Uh, that's for a number of reasons. Uh, first, it, screening is uncommon. The cancer can grow very quickly and therefore patients are often diagnosed at a very advanced stage, as Montessa can attest to. When we start treatment, the cancer often comes back very quickly, and when it does so, it's very difficult to treat. Uh, so this cancer has historically been considered the forgotten cancer, and really we haven't had ad advances in the treatment for a long time until the last few years and the introduction of these immune therapies. Very interesting, doctor. Let's move over to Montessa Lee. Um, she was a never smoker, and at 28, uh, she was diagnosed with small uh, cell lung cancer. This happened back in 2006. Um, good morning, Montessa. Uh, tell me a little bit about your story here. Oh, sure. At the age of 28, I was actually misdiagnosed twice before they finally, an, an ER visit and an X-ray would reveal that I had a 15 centimeter mass tumor the size of a cantaloupe that was in my chest, um, and it eventually, through a biopsy, would lead to a diagnosis of small cell lung cancer. I was a vegetarian, I was um, a non-smoker, as you said, and I was a special educator going about my daily work, and my life changed as I knew it after that. How, how does that, I, I, I can't believe that. I mean, someone hearing this story, you had a cantaloupe size, um, I, I guess, a a cancer uh, growing in you. How does that happen if you're such a healthy person, you don't smoke? Did, did, what did the doctors say? Yep, and um, they said I was 28. It wouldn't have been the first, second, third, fourth thing they ever thought about. And um, Dr. Owens can allude more to that uh, fact of how the tumor grew so quickly or how long it was there. And I was asymptomatic until that visit to the doctor. That is that is crazy. Uh, doctor, can you weigh in on that? I mean, how does a, a, a tumor like that grow the size of a cantaloupe um, it, when someone is, you know, by all other uh, measurements, very healthy? Yes, that's a really important uh, point is that these cancers can grow very quickly uh, and very large. And unless they're pushing on a, a rib or a, a nerve or compressing an airway, they can be entirely asymptomatic until someone presents with maybe just a simple cough. So it's really important that we think about screening for this cancer. Now, for the last decade, we have had screening in this country as a result of a, a, a large study that was published in 2010. And our current screening recommendations are that patients who are 50 years or older, who smoke or who recently quit smoking, talk to their doctor about getting a screening test. It's a simple CT scan. It's only a few minutes. It's non-invasive. 
and it could potentially save your life. But it's important to remember, if you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. As Montessa, uh, you know, shows, about 25% of patients in this country diagnosed with lung cancer are non-smokers. In some parts of the world, it's up to half of patients with lung cancer are non or never smokers. Uh, so this cancer, despite decreasing incidence of smoking, it continues to exist and, and it will continue to be a problem. Let me follow up with you, doctor, on that because, um, it, you know, this is interesting to me. Um, you, you mentioned people who are smokers definitely should get screened uh, for lung cancer, but it, it sounds like everybody should get screened. I mean, um, are there some warning signs, some telltale signs, or, um, you know, should we just get screened for lung cancer like we get screened for everything else? Well, all of our screening guidelines have specific recommendations for age or uh, for risk factors. So our current screening is, is as I mentioned, uh, based on age and, and smoking exposure. However, symptoms to look out for are things like cough and pain and chest pain or coughing up blood. Anything like that should obviously trigger a discussion with your doctor or a visit to a to medical center. Montessa, um, did you did you want to weigh in on on some of the research here and, and why it's so vital, uh, or anything else about your story that perhaps could help some of the viewers that are are watching this interview right now? Right. Yes, and um, your viewers they can be self advocate for themselves because I did have those symptoms. I had a cough. I had I did not have I wasn't coughing up blood, but I had a cough and I had chest pain. I had back pain but they never gave me an x-ray. So I didn't know to advocate for that. So some of, the, some of those are things they can ask for. Well, I have this chest pain, can you, um, I want a CT scan just to see what's there. And these advancements in research are leading to options, which are plural. So people diagnosed with small cell lung cancer will have options. When I was diagnosed, I had the standard of care. There were no other options. The needle hadn't moved in decades at that time, and, and it still hasn't until the last few years for, as Dr. Owen said, the forgotten cancer. We were often forgotten. And so this new research is very important, and patients out there, there is hope. And so just don't go home, lay in your bed, and think your life is over. There's hope, and I'm lending a voice to patients like myself. I appreciate that, Montessa. Uh, Dr. Owens, uh, one more thing uh, from you. Um, anything else you'd like to tell our viewers who may be watching this and kind of interested um, in ways to protect themselves, maybe where people can get some more information on this? Yeah, I would really encourage your listeners to visit our website at lcfamerica.org or to text LCFA at 41444 to learn more. Okay, uh, Dr. Dwight Owen and uh, Martissa Lee, uh, uh, Montessa Lee, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, a very interesting interview uh, with you both. I appreciate it and uh, have a good one. Thanks very much for having us.